What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy, bringing you another gold nugget that you can either pick up or you can just kick it aside. I hope your day is as is as prosperous as mine is. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you all, because I wanted to come out here today and do this special little uh, video about the movie Leave the World Behind. You know, uh, I got an email and somebody said, you need to check out this movie. And I went and checked it out. Uh, actually, it passed me on to somebody's YouTube channel who was talking about it. And I heard a little bit of it. And I, I don't like to spoil. <laughs> I don't like to be spoiled by other people's perceptions because um, I like to gain my own. And anyway, I, 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 I went to the watch the movie immediately. It's a long movie, y'all. Two, two hours and 20 minutes. I watched it three times. Let me say two and a half times. Two and a half times I watched it. Um, but after I spent all night long till 3.30 in the morning writing notes down, um, I came up with some things, okay? How many of you all by a number one have watched the movie? Somebody said 1619 code radio station goes deeper than that, y'all. You know, the one thing I'm thankful for is I travel, I do research and things that I see when I when I go into looking at um, the things I look at it with a critical. eye. I don't look at movies with uh, with uh, entertainment eyes. One is because I went to film. So let me put my little resume out here for those people who don't think that I'm quit to even do a decoding or whatever. But. Um, I went to film school. Well, let's start with the military because I had to put my military hat, hat on. Did 20 years in the military and worked uh, worked in intelligence. Okay, I worked in defense intelligence. I worked in the Pentagon. I worked in some top secret places and all that stuff right there where I was, I was privy to information and understanding about information as well as how to obtain information. No, I was not no spy or anything like that, but let me tell you this right here. Um, intelligence, first and foremost, means information. That's all intelligence means. And information is whatever you can draw from, anything, to give you a message or a story that you put bits and pieces together. Let me say this right here as a, a disclaimer for people coming in. Do not, please don't rob yourself of falling into life ever again about agreeing and disagreeing. Let me say that again. Do not do a harm to yourself in life by thinking you agree or disagree with something. The key thing in life is getting an understanding. Okay. That's the first and foremost. Not many people watch this movie. I'll see. That's the first thing in this whole shebang is put a one if you watch the movie. If I see that you all who I already did, for those who come in, because a lot that just came here in the last minute, if you watch the movie, please put a one, because then I know you're sticking with me because I'm going to share some stuff that many of y'all doesn't even catch. So I have a background of understanding how to put information together, intelligence, okay? But I also, because I did 20 years in the military, I also have a background in filming. When I retired from the military, I went to film school. I went to film school and I learned a lot about filming. I learned a lot about directing. I learned a lot about how to direct, how to film shooting, whether it's angles, whether it's a, a headshot, mid-range, full body shots, uh, how to get key the, 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 um, the audience into certain things. Uh, when I was in the film school, also I worked and got fin finished with school, as well as when I was in my intern, I worked as a production assistant, a PA. Everything in a movie, I'm going to say majority of things, large majority of things in the movie that are in a scene, on a shot, are purposely done. We can say that whether it's pictures on the walls, whether it's a bottle in a shot, whether it is the shirt you're wearing, a hat on the shot, it all is done for a purpose. First and foremost, okay, let me educate y'all this, on this. Anytime you see anything, if there's labels on something, if it's stuff like this, these are sponsors who want their name to be in the movie so that they can draw an audience or a customer base to purchase their items or 
to at least give them recognition so that you know whatever it might be. OK, so in a shot, in a scene, there are things that are purposely put. They don't just put shirts on people, hats on people. You see a BMW with the emblem showing. You see a billboard. You see whatever. These things are purposely done. So when I watch movies, because when I was doing PA, there were things that I had to do on set, setting up sets, meticulously putting things in the shots that would be seen, close-ups or far away. Typically, if you did not come to get permission from a company to put their item in a shot, you have to cover it. Because they can come back and say that you did a disservice towards their company, depending upon the movie, and yet there might be loss in sales. There might be things that where you just did not, you know, um, think about that the company because they hold up. Y'all didn't get permission for us to use for you to use my product. And you got a crime scene. And yet if somebody was killed and it was a so our soda, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, whatever right there. Now, people who didn't like that scene is not going to buy our product. It's like the Budweiser. Remember when they used the trans, whatever it was, many of the men stood up and said, I'm not drinking no more Budweiser. This goes on in scenes. So I have a wealth of knowledge when it comes to movies and what's on the scene, which I have a critical eye when I watch film from the top to the bottom, to the left, to the right. I am watching to try to push out, to pull out messages. Okay. So we know that, um, this movie was done by a, uh, by, from a movie in 2020 uh, that was a book written. Now, you got to forgive me on this one because I did not read the book. And I really wanted to try to find, could I get a summarize of the book to get a feel of how far did it, the movie was stretched from it? I didn't do that. This was just too much. And I wanted to get this out because I got a lot of things I got to go on. I'm busy. I'm going to a play tonight. And I got other videos that I want to put out. So I did not do that. But what I did discover as well is that Obama and many of y'all know Obama actually played a part in this movie because he has a production company, right? That they make films and stuff, right? And it's called, um, uh, what is it? Higher Ground or something like that. And so what I found out with this film, they consulted Obama for this movie that is the, that is basically about the internet shutting down, you have no phone access, you have none of these things. So you have to ask yourself first and foremost, because I saw the interview of the writer and also the director. They play it off and just, oh yeah, we made it right here to give them scary, scary, spooky little messages, or we just did these type of things. But they did more than that. And what I want to do is expose some of the things that you may not have picked up. But why President Obama? Because President Obama has some secrecies that he had to go through when he was as a president. Now, if anybody knows, one of the departments I worked in was in, it's, it was the Air Force Central Adjudication Facility. One of my jobs I did there, I did several jobs there. One was working in where they did the security clearances. I got to learn a lot about security clearances, clearances behind the scenes because this was where you got to see how deep security clearances go. Now, most people would think that a presidential security clearance is the highest it can go. In actuality, it goes further than that. But even if you got a presidential, even the president himself is not privy to information that may not be set for his eyes. He does not have the right to have all the information that's out there just because he have a presidential uh, clearance. There's a thing that's called a need to know. If he doesn't have a need to know, we don't have to share that with you. So people who have these top secret clearance, SCIs, SBIs, and all that right there may not have a need to know means that you will not be have access to going into the White House. I happen to have access, had access that would afford me to go in certain departments, certain um, 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 Skiffs, if you will, uh, a skiff is like a a a, a secret uh, compartment that you would go in. Like I used to work in um, some um, we would call them vaults, all right, or safes. This is where it was classified was uh, heavy 
where you couldn't you had to have computers in there because computers gives off signals and people can pick up signals so we had to be in a uh, a tight safe security where uh, um, signals could not be pushed out or taken out so president obama why was he consulted he was consulted because he's got some information that he can add to the movie now because of a secret of the secrecy and I know already that when you are finished with your job, military, president, or whatever type of jo job you have as as, as uh, clearances, there are things that you have to sign before you walk away. Now there are there are there are clearances, um, or excuse me, there are clearances stamped on information that eventually it will expire. That it could be released to the public. Now being released to the public. Um, you still have to be very cautious when releasing information out because of the fact that uh, um, some things still might be sensitive. But in saying that, when I got retired from the military, there was I had a signed documents on uh, I had a, a three year span on that. I could not, you know, just go out here and write a book about information and all that stuff right there until it was released for, for the public's viewing under the Freedom of Information Act, then that information can be shared. And most of the time when you go ahead and apply, if you ever have, I've done it before, to request Freedom of Information Act, information that you might be interested in, a lot of stuff might be blacked out that they just don't want the public to know, whatever it might be, and you only get whatever they give you. So President Obama has information. Now the question of it is, is what information? And how far can he go in releasing releasing information? What I found interesting is that if they wanted to to solicit his advice on this movie of suppose it, if all of this internet goes down by a virus or by hackers, what could he add to the story? I'm glad you asked. What he could add is anything, basically, as long as he is in the in the, the frame of uh, whatever information that he was privy to, I'm quite sure he was able to consult an attorney. Attorney was tell, tell him he can be able to release whatever information. Now, we don't know exactly what information he added to this movie that came from a book. But there are some things that pointed out to me that that came straight from him. So without further ado, let's get into this movie, okay? I'm not going to show any of the movie but what I will do is just walk down and show pictures that I took in order to go give you a knowledge of what we're talking about. So first and foremost, OK, let me just say some things about uh, some of the characters. I'm just going to stick with the two men. The two men were nothing but soft butterballs. They were cowards. They were uh, 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 what you call um, emasculated. Uh, our brother. Um, our the main character brother, one of the main characters, uh, what his name is? I wrote his name down because I can't pronounce it. Is Mahir Shala Ali? He cried three times in the movie. His daughter basically punked him, and he was soft. He was really soft, and he emasculated and giving the black man an image like we're just so weak. Now Clay, the white guy who was the wife's the the wife's husband in the movie, she punked him. She basically controlled the marriage, and these men were just butterballs. But we're gonna get into it. All right. Let me say this right here. Okay, let me get back here to the top. This movie started out. Of course, I just gave you just a, a summarize of a people who internet shuts down. Um. This couple, white couple, they decide to get away on the weekend, go go rent out an Airbnb who happens to be a house of this black man who in the movie um, um, name is G.H. Scott. The, it, the, 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 the Internet goes down. People lose a signal. He comes back in the middle of the night to knock on the door and say, can I stay here? Because they was in the city, they were lit, but his house is out in the suburbs of New York, which you have a view once you get to the water to see the whole city from a distance. Reluctantly, the woman didn't want him staying because she couldn't verify who he really was. But 
he had the keys to one of the uh, the drawers in the house, and uh, the husband of her, he decided they after she pulled him to the side said we need to discuss this. Let's just let them stay. Where else are they going to go? So they wind up staying. So anyway, day breaks in and the couple in them. Well, let me back up a little bit. The couple in them before the guy came, they went to the beach. They're sitting on the beach and. The first situation happens, which is. Let me take you to my screen. A ship from the distance slowly starts to creep in and. Um, hold on a second here. Higher screen. It slowly starts to creep in and then it eventually. Make sure y'all can see this. It eventually finds its way on shore. Okay. This ship finds its way on shore. Now, one second here. You look at this after I got finished doing my whole homework and all this right here. I said, wow, you know, I was, first and foremost, I had to see what everybody had to say. And people missed it. They missed a lot of the things that I picked up on. And not to brag or anything, but this ship comes up on the shores, okay? And this is what they see as they're running. Everybody's running away from this big old ship coming on the shore. And what does it say? It says white lion. Now, okay, good. Y'all can hear me. So it says white lion. Now, that doesn't seem like anything, but if you watch and see, somebody mentioned that in the movie, which I'm going to take you to, people had um, said in the movie that this scene here, let me see if I can find it. That's not it. This scene here. I got so many clips. Uh, did I take a picture of it? I didn't take a picture of it. They had a they had on his radio on his radio. He could not get a signal, and it was the radio station sixteen nineteen. Okay, sixteen nineteen. Now let me go to my notes. I looked up sixteen. Now I know that white lion, but many people miss this. The white line, listen to this right here, 1619, and the white line on the ship. In 1619, I asked AI, y'all better get AI because you ain't got to wrestle through with all of this God dog going, all this God dog going, um, internet Googling, and you got to go through all these things here. I asked him what major things happened in 1699. Now, we knew slavery was about, you know, launched and everything, but this is what it said. A major event relating to slavery occurred in English colony of Virginia. It is commonly referred to as the arrival of the first African slaves in English North America. In August 1619, a Dutch ship called a Dutch ship called the White Lion arrived at Point Comfort, Virginia, now known as Fort Monroe. The ship carried approximately 20 enslaved Africans who were sold to the colonists, marked, marking the beginning of the system of chattel slavery in the English colony, which later became the United States. This event had profound and long lasting consequences for the African diaspora and the history of slavery in America. Did y'all get that? You see. Why would they put in here the white lion and the 1619, which was a roadmap? See, I told y'all I worked in film. Sometimes they don't just give it to you back and back. 
but you got to be able to take the pieces and you got to consider it all, which is a hell of a job, which is intelligence. This is how intelligence works. Intelligence work where you got to take the pieces and, and, and take those pieces and you, it, it, you take them and like putting the pieces of a puzzle together. And then it will create and tell a story. So this ship, White Lion, in 1619, that was in uh, the car of the guy, he couldn't get signal. It actually was a witness to this ship. Why would they do this? Now, you have to draw your own conclusion, but here again, what I detect from it, as that white ship, white lion ship back in 1619 that settled, settled on the shores of America in the area of Fort Monroe was the first 20 enslaved Africans that came. And because this hysteria is happening right here in the movie and everybody is running, that this right here is the first cursing in line. One of the first cursings was, you know, first cursing was this event of the land of damn Erica. Put the D in front of America, capitalize the E, damn Erica. So this was the first of the show of the signs that I saw, the white lion. Now, I can draw more out of this right here and go into it, but for the sake of time, y'all go ahead and put take your notes, and then you all come up with your own. Now, in this movie, I didn't take a picture of it. In the movie, he was sitting there as the guy was telling him the story of his encounter. The brother was, he made himself a cup of coffee. He made himself a cup of coffee, and he was stirring the cup. And the shot went straight to the cup of coffee. And it just so happened that the cup was a Starbucks cup. Now, if you know anything about Starbucks, all right, those emblems, emblem, the emblem of Starbucks have a meaning. And it has a, an ex explanation on the Starbucks. But one of the messages on it is refers to is siren. This emblem is what many of the so-called uh, Europeans would use this goddess when it came to bays, when countries would come into the bay, this face would be used as a scare tactic for those who would come into the bay. But it also was a siren or an alert that was sent off, sent out. When the man was stirring his coffee, the sign that came was get out. Y'all remember the movie, get out? This was a message that was sent. And this is what I took down was the Starbucks emblem is siren and it means to get out when he was stirring that cup of coffee. Now, we're going to go on further into this movie. I didn't take a picture of this either, but um, before I get ahead of myself, let me make sure I do this right here. This picture here is a picture that's in the living room. I took and three times they showed this picture and each time this picture changed. Now, let me go back here to you all. What I found interesting about the uh, that pitch, the picture, it kept changing. Now I came, I was like, man, I gotta look at that picture, man. What's what's that picture about? What the first picture looked to me was this family. This is what the first picture looked like to me. Uh, I went to the Ku Klux Klan and the picture resembled the Ku Klux Klan to me. Okay. That's what it looked like to me. But the picture began to change. And I sat there and I studied and studied and I said, huh, let me do something. I went and took those pictures. I took a picture of it and I put it through Google. 
If you don't know, you can go through Google and take any picture. And if you 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 have to, uh, Google will try to translate that picture. And it just so happened that. Let me go to my Google Translate. See, I travel, so I have to have my Google Translate. So when I'm talking to people, I can understand what they say. Or if I see pictures, I can also do that. But I went to. Let me show you all this right here. So I went to, I went to go, let me see if y'all can see this. Let me go back to my thing here. So that's the Ku Klux Klan. And um, so I went to Google, let's see if y'all can move this light out the way. And let me turn this down so y'all can see this. See if you can see that better. Okay, there we go. All right. So you go to Google, right? And then what you do is, it's kind of hard to see. What you do then is you got a thing that says search inside photos. You go inside your photos and you can call up a picture once you take the picture of the photo. So I took the picture of the photo. Find a photo. I took a picture of the photo. And uh, here we go. So I took a picture of that photo right there. So you see how Google just went and did his thing around it. So now I do is I'll push search. And it's going to try to find that image. And what it'll do is it's going to come up with some information. Uh, let's see here. So what it did was it brought up a photo that was close to it. It was images that um, you can see here, these different types of photos. This happened to be from an artist. Um And his name is, this guy's name is Gregory Hennon. Now, I didn't want to go through and try to research all of this and stuff like that. But that image kept changing. And those two other photos, I swear, as I begin to look closer and closer, and it couldn't pull nothing up on those same exact photos, it looked like a slave ship with a lot of slaves on it to me. And let me show you the picture. It's hard to detect. It's hard to pick it out, but I'm like, okay, why is it that first we saw the white lion on the ship? We had a 1619. You take that and it comes, the history shows in 1619, the ship called the white lion came on the shores. The first 20 slaves was on that ship. Now, let's see here. This picture right here. And it's hard to see, but over here in this corner right here, you can almost make out people. And this right here was almost like a lot of small people. And it's hard to see it of, of people faces that's cramped together like they have had slaves. That's what I got out of that. And so anyway, no, I don't want to bore you with that, but let's continue on with the movie. So in the movie, they were in the house playing games. And one of the games they were playing was the block games. And let me see if I can, let me see something. Um, let me see if I can call this, uh, let me turn this down. What I can do is, what I can do is, I can try to find spots here in this movie, hopefully. Um, but you know what's so funny is, this movie ain't nothing but about really these messages like of slavery. And to to me, it's like, okay, here we go, here we go. I found it. 
All right. Now I can see if uh, they were playing this ball, this blocks right here. And on the blocks, let's see if I can find it. There we go. Let me turn the volume down. Okay. On the blocks, it has Jenga. Hold on a second. Because remember, like I said, um, when I was in film school, there's a lot of things that are done purposely to send messages. It's not by chance, coincidence, or accident that you know you start seeing these different signs or words or whatever. They were just there. And if you don't have a critical eye to study or watch movies, then you're just in it for the entertainment. But there can be hidden messages. And so here. Let me get here. Uh, I'm waiting to them to get to this piece, this part. Okay. I don't see. Why didn't they show it? Oh, that, that is right there. Okay, let's see. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, hold on a second. I got to get this. It's blurred, so I want y'all to see this. Because this means something. This is a clue. All right, there we go. So now, I don't know. Hold up. Why am I showing y'all the screen? Could you see the screen? Yeah. Oh, you can't see my screen. Hold on a second. Let me go back here. Let me go right here. I'm up trying to show you, trying to show you on my phone, and I got it on my computer. All right. So now we got tire screen. Oh wow! It's not gonna let me share it. Huh? There we go. Right there. You see Jenga. That is on the blocks. Okay. I looked that up. The word means to build. And it's it's a Swahili word, which means to build. Now, in this, when they play in the building blocks and everything, now those blocks, when they went to the door and answered all that right there. And a couple shows up at the middle of the night and uh, the blocks fall down. So we see that there is a collapse. Now, you got to remember, they consulted President Obama. So President Obama's from Kenya. OK, he's from Kenya. And this Jenga is a, Sw is a Swahili word that means to build. Now, what does that all mean? Does it mean that Kenya is going to be built and, and then it's going to be tore down? I don't know. All I know is that was not by chance or coincidence or accident that they had that in the movie. So the next thing, clue in here, because I'm going to get to a conclusion here. Y'all just stay with me. In the movie, the brother, his wife is away on a business trip. And on the business trip, he discloses she's in Morocco. Okay. And I think I took a picture of that. Let me see. Let me go over here. I think I took a picture. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I don't want to get too far ahead either. Let me see. I took a picture of that, I think. Maybe I didn't take a picture of that one either. All right. So I'll go right here to the movie. Um, so here we go. Here we go. Where is he? 
Okay. All right, there we go. Now, this movie here, he's sitting in his car. He's been trying to reach his wife. Internet went down. Um, he's trying to reach his wife. Now, keep in mind now, they consulted President Obama. So what are they trying to say? Because they said when 9-11 happened, all of a sudden, all these clues begin to pop up. But like, people, do y'all remember? Y'all see this movie that was out? And remember this and that when it came to the Muslims or whatever, whatever. So here is a scene where he is on his phone. He's trying to reach his wife. He's trying to reach his wife. And he... And you see that he cannot get in touch with her. But this is on his phone. I think this is because uh, what's happening is because I, I probably don't want to show. But this is on his phone. Now, look at where it says is it says just tried, but is not going through. Are you at the airport? Is AT200 the right flight number? It's not showing up. Well, guess what your man did, not your boy. Because everything I'm looking at, I'm looking at it. I'm taking everything down that I can. Information, names, you know, pronouns, nouns, and every person, place, and thing. And I go to the internet. And I said, let me look up AT200. Lo and behold, it is a Moroccan flight. It is the heir of, of, of Morocco, the royal um, Moroccan airline and the flight that leave from Morocco, I typed in for March next year, any flight going to Morocco from Morocco to JFK is AT 200. Now this have this movie happening in New York city and planes are falling out of the sky. Matter of fact, there's a scene where a plane, he sees a plane headed, he's starting to run and it goes right there on the shore and it crashes into the ocean. AT200 is a flight directly from um, Morocco, from Casablanca to JFK. Now, is that a coincidence? Did they, We know they put a lot of look, uh, research into this because what does it mean though? You know, if because we know that an internet virus will happen. That's a given, it's gonna happen. The question of it is, is that do you pay attention to what they say in this movie? Because President Obama was consulted and yet is he saying something, disclosing something that he can't just let the cat out the bag, but he can leave a trail of information. This is called intelligence so that now you can just go on through and take up the pieces and maybe be warned of something. So now let me go back here to my other screen, Let me share the screen, entire screen. Let me share this. We get now into, I look at this right here. Now, y'all who just came in, y'all missed when I said, y'all missed when I said, um, these two men were nothing but punks. He, being Clay, his wife punked him in the movie. I mean, she basically, when they when a situation happened in the movie where the, 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 the um, Tesla cars were driving by themselves and crashing into, to each other, he was talking and she said, get your ass in the car. And she gets in the driver's seat and she takes off and maneuvers, does all this strategic moving and driving. And yet, I'm like, what is that? Boy, but he was he was a wuss in the movie, but he wore this shirt in one of the scenes, which is called Bikini Kill. Now, here's the interesting thing. That is a record player. OK. And the odd thing about this movie is three scenes showed a record player. And I'm like, Lord, what does this record player mean? I mean, what what does that mean? Now, let me go here. I researched what does bikini, I don't know what happened to my daggone pictures I took. I had the other scene. I'm about to go to the movie again. 
some of my pictures. I don't know. Anyway, I went to, um, I'm just going to leave it right there. I went to the internet. I said, what is the bikini kill? What is that? What is a bikini kill? A bikini kill was a rock punk group. It says this right here. Bikini Kill is an influential American punk rock band that was formed in Olympia, Washington in 1990. The band is known for their feminist and their riot girl ethos, which aim to challenge and confront issues of sexual assault, sexism, patriarch, a patriarchy through the through their music and performance. Bikini Kill was comprised of vocal, some vocalists they named. The band music often featured a raw do-it-yourself sound with energetic punk rock instruments. The lyrics address feminist perspectives and advocated for female empowerment and solidarity. Hence why these two men were punks in the movie. The brother cried three times. He was just so weak. His daughter punked him. And this guy that you see here named Clay, his wife punked him. This was really a feminist movie. So anyway, each in this movie, they had five chapters. The first chapter was called, or parts. The first part was called The House. The second part was called uh, The Curve. The third part of the movie was called The Noise. The fourth part was called The Flood. And the last part was, the, the fifth part was called The Last One. And I'm going to give you a conclusion with those five mean. I even had to try to surmise what does the five putting them together means. Okay, so let's continue with the movie. These, these little bits and pieces they were putting together. All right, so that was all for the first part of the clues that I had. We had the ship called the, the lion, uh, the king, the white lion, um, as well as the 1619 radio station that he was on. That right there, I read to you the history of that. The first slave ship that reached the tours of America was the White Lion in 1619. Um, we also had the um, we also had the Starbucks scene when he was stirring it and the emblem of Starbucks, which we know. I told you the history of Starbucks and that face, which means for the for those ships. They try to come in and overtake to get away. It was a goddess that's supposed to bring curses upon those who's trying to come into the bay. And actually, it, it, the name means siren. It means to blow or sound of an alert. But I can go spiritually with this with you all on this, too, because there are spirituals out of the Bible that I will get to. But um, so they, they, the guy was stirring it, which also was a reflection of the movie Get Out. Um the, the 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 blocks because President Clinton is from Kenya. The blocks had Jenga on it, which means Swahili Swahili word means to build. Um, they claim crashing down. So y'all keep your eyes on Kenya uh, uh, and see if something might happen with Kenya. I don't know, but also in that 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 chapter there, there was a book on the on the bed, and she made reference to it later on in one of the other. Uh, parts of the movie for the daughter to go get the book and read the book. Uh, the um, the book was from a Maria Miller, not Maria, excuse me, not Maria Miller, excuse me, was um, from a Odo Irving, and it was called the Beach Towel. I didn't read the book, don't know what it's about, and I didn't have the time to do it. And then also the last thing, uh, the other thing is that the man mentioned his wife was in Morocco. And then I tied in with the other part of the movie where he shows that he was trying to send his wife messages and he asked her, was her flight AT200? That flight coming from, I looked it up, put in, punched in like I wanted to get a ticket from Morocco to JFK, New York. It is flight AT200. Does that mean anything? I don't know. Y'all just put that in your notes. So that was the end of part one. Then we get into part two, which is called The Curve. All right. 
So we know that the young daughter has a fixate, she has a fixation on the sitcom called Friends. And she talks about this off and on through the whole entire movie that she wants to watch her friends of the sitcom. The last one is called the ep is the episode of it. So that is a clue that I looked up. And so I went and researched about Friends, the sitcom, and the last, the last one is what it's called. And what I found out basically was the whole cast and all that right there, they did this last sitcom. Let me read this real quick to you all. The reason why I'm, I'm doing this is because some of y'all got bits and pieces that I don't have, and y'all can email me those bits and pieces so we can gather a story. Because like I told y'all, when I was in intelligence, that's what intelligence means, to gather information so that you can find where the story is. So it says that the last one, which actually is the name of the last part of the movie is the last one. It says here, I, I, I asked a, AI to give me a summarization of this last one of Friends. It says this episode begins with Rachel receiving a job offer in Paris, which puts her in a limbo. Meanwhile, M Monica and Chandler are preparing to move out of their apartment with the newborn babies, leaving Joey as the last one in the group to leave in the iconic apartment. Ross realizes his feelings for Rachel and rushes to the airport to stop her from leaving. However, he fails to express his true emotion before she bounds boards the plane. Does that have anything to do with the husband and his wife? Don't know. Back at the apartment, Phoebe and Joey finds out about Monica and Chandler' decision to move to the suburbs and have mixed re and have mixed reactions. Uh, the gang, the gang gathers. There's part two to it. This is part two of that last one episode. The gang gathers in Monica and Chandler's empty apartment, reminiscing about their memories and the history they say they shared. Phoebe discovers that the apartment has been kept unlocked and they all decide to leave keys as a symbol of always being there for each other. Now, when I looked up 1619, I went to AI and I said, give me every scripture in the Bible. Y'all, some of y'all will say this dude is obsessed with this. I like information. I like research. I really do. But I like to find the bits and pieces because that's what I did. So the only scripture that came up that had 619 was Matthews. And it says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever that you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. For y'all out there who follow the scriptures, y'all better take note of that because we know even COVID happened and we know wars have happened. Some of y'all haven't lived long enough to go through many things. I've been through a lot of events through my lifetime. So we do know there are keys that you can hold on to. All right. Scriptures, the word, the spirit you can hold on to and you can lose and you can bound things on heaven as those things are bound and loosed in, I mean, bound on earth and loosed on earth as it is in heaven. So y'all can also write down that scripture. But as a twist, Rachel gets off the plane, shows up at Ross's apartment, revealing that she still has feelings for him. Ross, Rachel finally confesses their love for each other and decides to be together. That concludes basically the whole thing of that right there. Don't know if much was salvaged out of that. But I just went through that whole episode, Friends. And then, you know, their, their song on there was, I'll be there for you, because it gets to the point of this movie that beginning of it that the brother comes back to his house that he rent an airbnb to this white couple who really don't want them staying there but the man the, the, the wife she's very apprehensive wants to talk to her husband say no i don't really but yet you know i don't know them he says come on just let them stay downstairs because they had a a a um like an in-law suite down in the basement so they they let them stay in the basement in their own house and um there's this friction you know, the daughter's smart with the couple. The white woman don't like the daughter and, you know, they don't know and they're sizing each other up. But anyway, they eventually start to find a place of peace once they realize they're caught between this whole hell that's going on around them in this world. When they see that all the sirens are going off, uh, the, they've already seen the ship come ashore. Uh, the brother saw the airplane crash out of the sky. There was a plane before that that crashed. But he witnessed it himself by the second plane crashing out of the sky. So this whole thing goes on. But 
The parts means a twist, okay, for y'all to know. So I learned that in film. Parts basically means look out for a twist. So part two comes up and this is what's happening, okay? Now, in part two, I've said the daughter has obsession over, over uh, the Friends episode. The daughter has the NASA shirt on, okay? She has a NASA, a NASA shirt on and um, take that for what it was. That's that other sign right here. Uh, the picture that I told you all that I went to Google to try to decipher, decipher, decipher who it is or what it is about. I couldn't find meanings on it, but it really looked to me, the first one looked like Klansmen in outfits, which is this picture here. You see there behind her are two, you can see the eyes of the hood of the Klansmen. Can y'all see that? And, um, let me see if y'all, let me talk with y'all. Okay, so y'all can see the hood. There's two eyeballs there. Then these other ones are, look like hoods. I showed y'all already that. So, um, the daughter wears the NASA shirt all the time. Then we have episodes of the deer. The deer, they act frantic, but they're calm, but they come into the yard. It's about a hundred of them. And several times they approach the human beings like it's a warning, whatever. They can't pick up the sign. I didn't look further into that, but I know that there are some things that are going on with this with the deer. Okay. That's the NASA. She always wears a shirt. The son wears this shirt that says obey. Now, interesting enough, you know, here we know we've already open up the doors to the slave ship and we already opened up to the Ku Klux Klan hoods. Now this right here is saying obey. He has the shirt that says obey. Okay. Now also in this movie, in this chapter of the movie, they have, they make mention that, okay, you know, yes, the internet is down this and that. And they make reference. Well, you know, remember when New Jersey hackers had, wind up doing this very same thing. Um, and uh, so I looked that up and it did happen that there was an episode when some hackers wind up doing something in New Jersey. And also there, they mentioned about in 2006, I looked this up on the computer virus. They mentioned about the love you bug. That was these two teenage Filipinos who wind up shutting down some operations on the internet from the love you bug. They made mention of that, okay? Um, I've already mentioned about the A2200 flight. Um, then they had a sign on a house that was called Huxley. That was the name of the people who lived at the house. The people were never there, but that was the name of the people in the house. Um, and I researched, who is Huxley? Well, of course, I went to AI and I asked, what prominent name is Huxley? Well, um, I didn't take a picture of that. But Huxley... Is a, is a primarily known for his association with a renowned English biologist. He's a biologist, um, Thomas Henry Hux, Huxley. Thomas Huxley, also known as Darwin's Bulldog. Y'all remember Darwin, we came from apes. Remember that, okay? And he was a prominent supporter of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution and played a vital role in the acceptance and popularization of the theory in scientific community. Now, remember, they believe that black man came from the ape. All right. The humans came from the apes. So that's who Huxley was. Now, remember, these are these are types and shadows and direct they're pointing you in directions. So we've already got another inference of slavery in the movie. Uh, let's see here. OK, let me take you out to this part of the movie here, because here was something I thought, well, here we go again. Let me go ahead and find this in the movie. So in the movie, they're running frantic. Uh, they decide the white couples decide they got to go in and try to save, get out of this place, try to find their way to safe place, whatever. Um, and. The guy decides, well, not, not the family. The guy was out there on his own. And um, 
he runs across the white guy's out there on his own. Hold on one second. Let me get here. I'm going to show you all this right here. He's in the car and he's going out trying to get help or find whatever. Because his son has gotten sick or whatever. I don't think his son got sick yet. Oh, one second. And he winds up now. He gets to a place where on the road, it's deserted, and he runs across this Hispanic woman. And uh, hold on a second here. He runs across this Hispanic woman. He runs across the Hispanic woman, and she's speaking nothing but Spanish. And this is the woman, and she's frantic, and she's just speaking Spanish. And there's no captions you can read what she's saying. But you know, your man, not your boy, I recorded that, and then I put it through my Google's translations. Tell you, I use that app because I travel a lot in different countries with different languages. It works very handy. So I took a picture of the translation. And this is what the woman says. Oops, that's not it. Let me see here. Some pictures, I don't know why, is not showing up. Okay, so she's speaking in Spanish, and nobody knows what she's saying. So I look it up, I record it, and this is what she says here. Here we go. She says, thank God, I found someone. I'm trying to get back to my house. I got off track while I'm walking a while ago. She says, I need to use your phone. It's dead because mine's dead because you're the first person I've seen all day. We have to get out of here to a, uh, because there's a red, uh, there was a red, uh, a, there was a helicopter dropping red leaflets in the surrounding area area she said then she says there is there is this person i have there is a per, you're the first person i have i have seen all day we have to get out of here i just i just saw a plane that was spraying a red gas that was the red leaflets it was a helicopter she said spraying a red gas in the surrounding area then she says i saw some deer more than 50 please I need, I need your help, sir. It seemed to me that the the, so, the soldiers ran away. There is no one around here. It will be a chemical attack. Please, I won't be left here, sir. He takes off and leaves her. Okay, so he takes off because he's afraid. He's I can't understand you. I do not know what you're talking about. So he leaves her, and he winds up going down the road, and he comes across. He comes across I'm, I'm trying to do this now let's see here let's see uh that was before this scene try to show y'all this Okay. All right, right there. That's the leaflets. It looked like it's blood falling from the sky, but those are leaflets. All right. So anyway, he gets the leaflets. He gets one of the leaflets because it, the, the, it catches up with him and it drops all these leaflets on his car. Now, the scene goes to part three which is the noise, and there's this blaring noise, screeching noise that just tears up the ears. They got to cover up the ears and all that there. Anyways, he finally comes back to the house. All right, now I can go through that, that, that screeching sound uh, or the, the, the sound that's going off. In Revelation, it talks about the vials being open, and it also talks about the trumpets being, the trumpets will sound, all right? That trumpet sound is an alarm. All right, that goes off. Only believers are going to know what's going to happen. 
But read your scriptures. You're going to find that out. But anyway, he gets to the point where he comes back home. The brother just sees a plane is, is headed back because the brother was went to go try to search out too as well. Those are all the leaflets behind him in the scene. Um, I wish this was a little bit more. That's the leaflets on his car. Okay. That is, uh, that's him running because the plane is about to crash. Wow. Skipped it. Okay. So you see the airplane coming, it falls out of the sky. Right there, you saw the airplane. Right there. Okay. So this plane falls out of the sky. Of course, we're insinuating that because the internet and the satellites have been taken out of the sky. They're claiming um, everything loses its signal. These planes are falling out. Cars are going on its own. All of these things here are happening. But we get to the point where he, the brother and Clay, the white guy, gets back to the house and there's this leaflet that he comes home and shows them. And I'll just, I mean, I'm not going to take it to the movie. It's just too much of that. I'll just go to my thing because I got it there. There's a leaflet that is dropped. And on that leaflet, leaflet this is the leaflet okay that is dropped right there it's a red dragon in revelations and throughout many of scriptures of the bible talks about the red dragon the red dragon is the devil or the spirit demon that has controlled nations now you know, Revelations talk about the, this, this red dragon that has 10 horns and which represents other nations that supports it and another, another, another five horns, what have you, and smaller nations. But the red dragon shall be defeated. And it's many people and scholars have said that this red dragon represents America. And here this whole scene is taken in America, that America's going through this in this movie, this horrific loss of signal, satellites are gone, everything's going in the uproar, everything, you know, is being blown up or falling out of the sky and all this right here. But the word on front of this, the sun says, oh, that means death to America. Now in the whole movie, they wind up insinuating that it either is Korea or China who's put these leaflets out. Well, for those who know language, you, I can tell that right there is Arabic. So I took a screenshot of this. I went to my Google Translate because you can take a picture of something and it'll translate it to you. So I took a picture of it and this is what it says. It says... The leaflet says, because they didn't tell you in the movie, you got to do your own homework. Uh, it says this right here. So on the front, it says death to America. This says on the back right here, we urgently request your attention to what we are saying in this post. We possess the most dangerous and destructive explosives in history. We leave you with this hor horrifying fact for you to contemplate. We emphasize the authenticity of what I have just used on your land. And there must be steps to stop the resistance and the surrender to submission. So based upon that information, 
Are they insinuating that Arab nations will cause a devastation to America, slavery to America possibly, based upon the information that was in the past, what I just went over? But this is a straight up Arabic and the movie is first they insinuated was trying to throw out who they think it is. They said Korea and they said China and they said Iran. They also mentioned, I think, Iran. And this right here is Arabic. And this right here is warning by an Arab nation to America because Arabs do say death to America. Um, they're emphasizing that they've possessed the most dangerous and destructive explosive. Now, remember, President Obama was consulted. And what does he know that's behind the scenes that we don't know? And that's what we got to take in consideration when they consulted him on this matter. Now, there were many clues that were said in this movie by them just speaking. Now, this brother right here, his job, he worked at um, the, um, the stock market, I'm thinking. He was, he was more or less a broker or he worked for Dow Jones, whatever, because he talked about clients. And in him talking about clients, here he talks about he should have knew something was coming. Now, this is the clue for all of us right here. He said, I knew something was coming. Okay, I'm let this run. Then he says, in my line of work, you have to understand the patterns that govern the world. Okay? You got to hold on to this. This is nuggets right here. Okay, you have to understand the patterns. He said, you have to learn how to read the curve. Remember the second chapter of the movie was called The Curve. You got to know by reading what's going on in society when shifts begin to happen, when new world orders begin to come into play. Some people say, oh, the new world order is coming. No, no, no. New world orders are nothing more than chapters in life when things are changed and cause the whole world to shift like COVID did. So he's saying, I should have knew, I should have saw, I should have knew it in my line of work. I should have read how, I should have read the curve. He's talking about the Dow Jones. He continues on and says, spend as long as I have doing it, it can help you to see the future. It holds steady. It promises harmony. Now, he's talking about the Dow Jones. He's talking about the stock markets. They can read when there are shifts. I mean, if anybody, I've invested many, many, much, much money in the stock market. And I, I've, I'm i very familiar with it. Don't claim to know it all. Don't claim to be a professor in it. But I will tell you this right here. The market is an indicator of societies and what goes and happens on societies. When people move or begin to sell, markets will begin to shudder with fear. And then you begin to see things begin to shift. Companies begin to have fear. Market economies begin to act off of these different shifts. But he's saying when it holds steady, it promises harmony. Then he says, it inches up or down, you know that means something. But he has a satellite. Oh, this goes into something else. So that was the end of that one. And you got to recognize that one of the tall tale signs of knowing what's going on in economies or societies is what is the what is the market doing? Got to write that down. All right. Now, the other thing was he had went to one of his people that he knew houses. He went there. There was nobody there. So he came across a satellite phone that the guy had. Hint, hint y'all, you better get you a satellite phone because he makes mention of this. He says he went to the house, he says, but he has a satellite phone. I thought it could help us. He further says. Now, the whole point of a satellite phone is that you always have a signal. If you have a clear view of the sky, which I did. Is it is if our satellites get knocked out of our commission. Now, he's saying he's saying is that all you have to do with a satellite phone 
is being an open space and it knows how to send signals to the satellite so that you are able to send messages to the outside world, okay? And in this movie also, when it gets to the end, you're gonna find that even it's like a police scanner, you know, you're gonna be able to tap into different signals and send messages to people who are out there and you're not stuck out there on your own and you can be able to converse and find out what's going on. You can talk to other people and all that there. Also, you all, y'all need to get you a thing called Citizens App. The Citizens App, it is a great app. They alert you on what's going on in America. I get alerts all the time. Even before it hits the news station, you get alert because there are people on the ground. Everybody's got phones and people record things. And so when things happen, boom, people will upload, up, upload the information. You got They got police scanners that go on that you can listen to and you get to see live footage and you get these alerts. And I always get alerted on things way before when they did the mass shootings that happened in, oh, in uh, Connecticut, when they just had this building collapse in, uh, was it, where is it, New York? I got instant messaging off that app. Get your, do yourself a favor and get that app. Citizen, it's called Citizen. Um, so he says satellites are networked to computers down here. So he talks about that. And so that's a hint that you can also use a satellite, a satellite um, 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 signal device, or what have you. Then here is something that they started talking to because I like to listen to what they saying. What is a means that you need to think about if the elect if, if the internet goes down because there's a grid that ran off of internet. That means you're going to lose electricity. You could possibly lose water because they're connected to grids and these grids are ran by computers, which computers are hooked up to servers and servers can shut down, which means then you're left with what? Very little to nothing. So they talk about what they should do as a means to stay ahead of the game. So they bring, they mentioned some things that I thought would be helpful. And these things were fill up your, 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 your tub. If you don't have a tub, fill up things with water because the water might shut off. Then have enough batteries, Tylenol. I would say they say Tylenol for pain relief if you happen to have pain or whatever. And food and a generator. These are things I was taking out of this, even though I know most of this right here. But also, and I got this too as well, I travel with this, is a hand crank radio. All right? And, it, and, and mine has where it, it has a small little satellite on it that it just recharges from the sun that it will give it uh, energy. These are things that you need to know that they're throwing out here because I believe all things have messages. Even movies are coming from men who have information. And so we can take this as a tutor, a, tu a teacher and sharing with us maybe some things that go on, all right? So now, also, uh, a straw that makes it safe to drink dirty water. I have one of those. To, let me show you. I got I got one of those right here. Because I travel a lot. I'll show you what it looks like. This right here. As y'all see, this right here is what they're talking about. A, 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 a straw that makes it safe to drink water. So you take this gizmo right here and you take this lid off and you and open this up. You put this in the water because there's a filter at the bottom of it. So I don't know if you can see this or not. All right. For those right there, you know, you got to you got to have some survival skills, y'all. OK. And then on here, you take this top off and you put it through the water, glass, whatever you suck through and it's going to filter the dirty water. You need to have one of these two for each person in your family. All right. So then in this scene also, uh, let's see what else was in this part. Because remember, this part is called this. is I'm in the third part called the noise. You got sounds going on, screechy noise that they're covering their ears up. You know, they have the sirens that are going off. You know, you hear the explosions that go, are going off. Um, I took it more spiritually 
as the sirens because of the of the of the uh, the sign of Starbucks, which means siren. Uh, when you look really deep into it, um, that these are alerts. You got to pay attention to the alerts. Um, then we get to the fourth part of the movie, which is called the flood. Okay. Now, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and put the three, the five all together in a conclusion. All right. So we get to, let me see where we're at now on this. Let's see what we got on here. Okay. He goes through these right here. We went through this part. Okay. So this is about when they was on the road. And all the Tesla cars was driving by themselves and they're crashing. And she take, I took a picture of this. This was on the car because I saw that barcode and I did everything to see. Was there a message in that barcode? Nothing came up, but I missed it. Um, I missed it. But after I did all this right here and I went on the Internet to see what people are talking about, somebody, there's a map that is in one of the living rooms that has a barcode on it. And if you put your phone on that barcode, it will. I tried it and they wouldn't even bring up anything. So I don't know if they made it up or not. But um, I tried it, but it would. They said it brought up this whole link and everything. And I wrote it down. I went to the link and it's about this haunted land that used to be an amusement park. And I try to find that they have any affiliation with slavery or anything that dealt with a black town or anything, but I didn't come up with anything. But here, was just a, a sign on the window of all these brand new cars that were self-driving itself on the road and they were crashing into each other. And it was just a long convoy of them that they were just crashing each other and they caught themselves in the middle of it. And she had to, you know, she punked her husband, get on the driver, driver's side. She jumped in the drive. She dropped in the driver's side. He jumped on the passenger side and she's dodging these cars coming at her. OK, but I thought that barcode would be something, but it wasn't. Then, then he talks about this client of his that gave him a message that he gave him a heads up uh, on something, but he didn't pick it up. So he says this right here. He says, some of my smarter clients have lots of money because remember, he is like a broker or he's on the uh, stock market or the uh, Wall Street. He works for Wall Street or something. And he says, because they base their choices on preconceived beliefs instead of truths. Okay. That's what people with money, you know, they, they, they invest their money and they operate off preconceived beliefs. Um, and he's talking about this client he had this conversation with and this guy's a lot of money and, and all this right here. But he says, seeing the difference is one of the hardest things a person can do. This is a message that I took as we can take and learn from. I might take a little satisfaction in watching the market punish them. He's saying he laughs when he sees when they lose money from the market. Uh, the scary ones, though, are the ones who don't learn. Even after they lose lots, and I mean lots of money. Nothing frightens me more than a person unwilling to learn, which to me is like, you better learn from this movie. You know, who's to say if this all adds up to something? Well, we do know there is going to be an Internet crash. We do know that. That's just the question is not if, but when. So then he says, you know, who's unwilling to learn. Even at their own expense. So we have to um, understand that. And then he says, that's dark. That's a darkness. I will never understand how people could be that way. But in this business world, he's one of the biggest out there. He's talking about his client because he wants to share with her about this client that he has. He deals mostly in defense contracting. I did a research on that. I'm talking about hush, hush, top secret money from the Pentagon. Anyway, we're at the sorry at his house. Perhaps the most powerful person I've ever had a meal with. With the rest of the evil cabals that runs the world. That's what he said. And, you know, that his friend had said to him is that, you know, they have this annual meeting. Somebody um, just my annual. He has an annual meeting with his cabal associates. And so he tells the guy he wants him to move around some of his money. 
He tells me he's going away for a while. Now, this is before this whole thing just goes haywire. He tells me he's going away for a while. Oh, yeah. Uh, he tells the guy when he calls him up and says that, he says, oh, yeah, you're hanging with your evil cabal this weekend. I thought, he says, I thought that was only during the winter solstice. Hint, hint, hint. Okay. Now, I need somebody to do research. Um, Y'all remember uh, the, the high profile people who goes to California on the annual meeting um, annually and they do it during the winter solstice? Somebody please tell me the group. I didn't have a chance to look it up. I totally forgot about looking it up, really. But can somebody put in the comments, what is the name of that? What is the name of the place that they go do that at? And there have been people who's brought that out. Okay. But he mentions this, right? Because this is supposed to be one of his high clients. And remember, they have consulted President Obama in this movie to give them some bits and pieces. The Bohemian Grove, thank you very much. That's it, the Bohemian Grove. Now, this is where these secret meetings happen. These so-called meetings that nobody else is able to get into, high profile, it's done once a year and all that stuff here. He makes mention of this, of his client. So the guy tells him, you take care of yourself. But he doesn't mention what's going on. He just told him to take care of himself. All right. He says a conspiracy theory about a shadowy group of people running the world. Now, listen to this. It's far too lazy of an explanation. Especially when the truth is much scarier. She says to him, what's the truth? Do y'all know Pontius Pilate was a Caesar Pontius Pilate asked Jesus the same question in the Bible. What is the truth? Jesus never answered him. He said, no one is. In, now, listen, this is Obama talking that I take this because he knows he was in the he was in the secret chambers. He was around these people when he became president. Oh, he thought he would make a change. No, no, no. They take you in the back room, sit you down, bring in some of these profiles and say, this is how things are going to be ran, buddy. He can't. Who is he going to turn to? He can't turn to nobody. Why? Because from the FBI to the CIA to the DIA to the NSA to the to the to the to all of these different agencies, these people are connected. So you have to understand, for those who came in late, I used to be in intelligence. I know exactly how some of these things work. I can't claim I know all because there's things that everybody is not privy to. Only people hold only bits and pieces of information. That means what I know, you may not know. And what you know, I may not know. Because in these circle of, of these clearances, the people who are receiving the information, there are people in each department that gather the information. And they pass the information along. And only those who are privileged can handle this information, can have this information. Ops, agents, spies do not have everybody's information. They only give them a job. Let me give you an example. Back in the military, we used to say, loose lips, loose lips sink ships. They used to say that when I would have to get a higher clearance because you have to be careful when you're going out on a mission. If you go going TDY or I'm going to a meeting, you cannot be in the bar drinking and talking about, yeah, I'm out here from such and such Air Force base at this meeting over here. Because there could be these agents or these spies out here from other countries who might got wind that there's a meeting going on at this base. So what do they do? They will frequent where military troops go to and they will sit in bars. So the guy that might buy, buy you even a drink sitting, oh, so what are you here for business or what? Oh, I'm here military. Yeah, I'm at a meeting here. Oh, for real. What kind of meeting you got going on? Uh, I can't really share much, but you know, 
you know, the drink, when drink starts flowing, then you start to lose slips, begin to sink ships. And you may not tell them in totality about what's going on, but you might just give them a bit, a piece of information. And that's all he needs, just a bit of information. And then he passes that information on and somebody else somewhere from that meeting will be there and at another place or another country or another place. They add, take this information and they add it up and then they will try to draw and make and create a picture of what's going on. Around us are spies every day. So he says no one. There's no, you know how people always think that there's a, there's these elite people in places that control the world. What he is saying is that there is no. And he said in high places, but who might have the, he might have the right kind of access to the right kind of information. But when events like this happen in the world, the best, even the most powerful people can can hope for is a heads up. So what did he mean, family? He is saying, don't, look, even the people with the most money don't, are not privy to the total big picture. They're not. And though they might control sectors of the community, you might control the banking. You might control the Dow Jones. You might control the government. You might control um a company, a corporation, an institution, but you don't control the whole world in its totality. The only thing they can hope for is to get a heads up, inside information, yo, like he does. Hold on a second. Yo. Are you here? Okay, um... The um, yes, uh, come on up. All right, okay, I got a guest coming, but anyway, I'll knock this out real quick. Anyways, we got to keep in mind Obama was consulted, so he's a man who would know that who are those people who was behind closed doors who came in his office, and he know he even knows, you know, these people can't control the world in totality. The only thing they can do is hope for the best. That's it. Get a heads up. Something's going down. Get your money. Like I told y'all, I ran across white Americans in these different countries who are buying up properties. They know some things are going down. I just showed y'all here in this video. They talked about reading the Dow Jones, knowing how to see the markers. When things is peaceful, when it's leveled off, everything is in harmony. When it begins to go up or down, Things begin to go ahead and change to give you an alert that there's something happening. All right. These are signs. Um, hold one second. Hold one second. So this goes on in a movie. Um, they start talking about the ships that he saw, which I already discussed that with you all. You begin to see weird things happening. You know, these flink flamingos, they land in their pool. And here is another one of the record. Remember I told you all there were three record players on this in this movie. The one that was on a shirt. The other one was uh, from a of, uh, like from a drone shot looking down as the car went around a roundabout. And that's the message I got is that a roundabout means to take you in a different direction. This is clues that one could have in a movie, a twist. So that means then let me take you a different direction. America don't have roundabouts, but we do know turntables is around, goes around. And that's the message that I got from these turntables. OK, um, let me look at my notes here. Look at my notes. So we have now was in the flood, okay? We saw that the it started to rain in the movie, rain, rain started to come. Now, flood could mean, water could mean washing away, a cleansing. This is what water could represent. A flood could mean to cleanse, to, to bring in anew, um, 
you know, like the flood that's in the Bible or, you know, like getting baptized or water is signified as cleansing or washing away. And that was this fourth part of the movie's title, The Flood. OK. They talk about the ship that was happening in the first. The flamingos happened. And then the girl gives an example that many of y'all have heard. I've used this before about the man. When the flood happens, the man is in the boat. He uh, not in the boat. The man is on top of his roof of his house. She tells that story that she, you know, he rejects the help. A helicopter comes. He rejects and says, God's going to help me. A boat comes. He rejects and says that God's going to help me. He winds up drowning and dies. He finally sees God and he says, God, I was waiting for you to help me. And God says, I sent you the helicopter. I sent you the boat and you refused it. That was God. She mentions that in there. OK. Um, so now we get to the last part. The last part is called the last one. All right. And it basically ends weird in this movie. It ends where the family, they still don't know really what to do. They're looking for the lost daughter. She's been, she's been lost since the fourth part of the movie. They can't find her. The son got sick. His teeth is falling out. They, they wind up going to this guy's house that the brother, uh, knew who he stocked up on water. He stocked up on food and all that right there. And he mentions about the neighbor down the street to give them a heads up. Like, look, I'm not giving up nothing. Well, this has been a, a, turn, a toss and turn in this movie because there was insinuations of white people, too, as well, that you can't trust them. In one part, the girl, the daughter, says to the brother, father, you know, dad, why are you letting these people be in our house? I mean, we've been down here in the basement for the last two days. And yet, you know, you need to stand up to them. You don't trust them. You know, you shouldn't trust white people. You, you know, if anybody, she said, you shouldn't trust anybody. But if anybody, don't trust white people. And even mama knows that. She makes a reference to that. Now, the brother, he's, he's like this cowardly lion. And he runs around trying to help these white people who only is really worried about themselves. She's only worried about her daughter, her son, and she has a disregard for him and his daughter. And this dude, he keeps running behind, running behind the white guy, and he's like the savior for this white guy. So he takes him to this guy that he knows because he knows this guy has stocks of stuff, tries to get the medicine. So the guy's reluctant. He pulls the shotgun out on the brother. The white guy, his, the, the one who lives in the house with him, um, he steps in the between because the brother pulls out a gun too, and he's like, "Won't you help the brother? Some won't you help him? He's trying to help his son." And the the dude about to take his head off with a shotgun, but they're both pointing guns with the other guy in the middle, and the son's in the car who's sick because he got bit by a bug or maybe whatever. So, to me, the message really is that you know here it is not of the whole entire movie, but you see this there's a tongue wrestling match between the white family and the black family. They don't have a trust for each other. But the white food people refuse because they're like, we really did that for the weekend. So the brother gave him a thousand dollars, say, you know, okay, for your loss, I can go and compensate this, right? Well, they wind up eventually going to go try to, they wind up leaving the house to go seek help, but they turn back around and came back to the house again. And so here they are back in this house. So this brother is trying to deal with these folks, and yet he is doing what most I see most of black people do want to be the savior for the white people. Oh, well, you know, I mean, I'm trying to hold. But the white dude who got the shotgun, who they went to his house, he he is he knew this guy very well, the black guy. And the black guy's like, yo, man, we know each other. We, he, and he, the white guy told him, huh, hey, I'm defending my own. He didn't care nothing about a friend. And this is what happens when you talk about seeing who people truly are when situations like this happen. People will turn on each other. And this is where we got to understand, too, is that. In a time of, 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 of desperado, people are going to go to cliques. Do you really think white people are going to hang with black people or black people going to hang with white people? Hell to the no. They're going to only click up and they're going to be with their own type and they're not going to trust anybody. And this is the message that I see because there's been nothing in this movie but slavery, signals, and symbols. Now, let me take you to the fourth uh, mention of slavery. We talked about the ship being the white lion and the signal on the car was 16, uh, 1689, which was the year that the white lion, which was on that ship, 
where um, it came ashore. If you look at your history in 1689, the ship named the White Lion brought the first 20 slaves to America. We talked about the Huxley uh, people's last name. He was the he was a he was a believer in Darwin's theory. They call him Darwin's bulldog because he believed in the evolution of man coming from monkeys. Then we saw the Ku Klux Klan on the picture of in the living room, and then it changed. And then I looked at the other two that looks like um, slaves on crowded on a ship deck. Then we get to this right here, which I'm going to take you to. Let me get back out of here. Now we're going to go to. Dang, I was showing these pictures and I don't think y'all could see. Oh, well, um, it's OK. I read it off, so that's a good thing. Um, let me go back here. Hold on a second. Let me find it first. Let me show you this right here. This is not by chance or coincidence, people, that they keep showing these messages of slave slavery. I'm telling you right now, even with that cup stirring, the message of get out, this whole white supremacy thing. This ain't about this thing, you know. I know people are like, oh, why does he want to bring up this or that? I mean. Goodness gracious, he's, he's bringing up the white, black. No, 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 I'm, I'm pointing some things out to you all so that y'all can see exactly what has what is transpiring. Okay, let me get here to this point here. I gotta find the spot. Make sure I'm on the right spot. We see we got a lot of people in here. I guess a lot of people are interested because I decode this thing here. Um, this is real, y'all. This is this is real, and it's unbelievable that I see nobody talked about none of this. And it's clear as day, it's smack dab in our face. Now let me find this part right here where there is another message to about slavery. Okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. Come on, please pull up. All right. So this part here, yeah, he was trying to find help. He was out there trying to get a signal. Um, give me a shot. Come on, give me the shot of this or my head of it. Uh, let's see here. Hold on a second. Yeah, let me see. Because they kept showing his screen when he was out of the car. They kept showing seek 1619. I think 1619. I think it's 89. 1619, the year the first, the first ship came into. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now let me share this with you. Now look at this right here. Oh, we got 2,000 people. Check this out, y'all. Check this out. I've already gave you all the, 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 the four, the four messages of this. Now look at this right here. This is not by chance coincidence. They did this. Oops, let me go back here. Let me stop that. Okay, here is tire screen. All right. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's do this. Okay, this this right here, okay? If y'all can see this sign, it says Taney. Let me see if I can get a close-up sign. Taney Farms is what it says, okay? That sign. Let me try to bring it back. Taney Farms. One second. Okay, there it was. Right there. 
That sign says Taney Farms. All right. So I said, huh, let me look that up. Let me see what Taney Farms is. Now, listen to this, y'all. Taney Farms. See, these jokers know what they're doing. This right here. So I went to AI and I said, share with me uh, the history of Taney Farms. Taney Farms, also known as Charlotte Hall Farms, is historic property located in St. Mary County, Maryland, United States. It was once part of an extensive tobacco plantation, and it was named after Francis Taney, who acquired the property in late 18th century. One notable aspect of Taney Farms history, listen to this, is its association with the extended Taney family, with which included Roger B. Taney. Roger Taney served as the fifth chief justice of the United States from 1836 to 1864, the year before Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation, right? And is best known for his controversial decision in the Dred Scott versus Sanford case in 1857, which ruled the enslaved African Americans were not US citizens and therefore could not bring suits in federal court. Now you tell me that this movie is not sending messages to a people, our people, of these hidden messages of slavery. I just read it to you. And you saw it there. Taney Farms. Do you think it's by chance or coincidence? The, all of these messages of slavery, do you think it's just by chance? No, no. They know what they're doing. You see, they know when they do these, these movies and stuff. Okay, so this is the last, this is called the last one, which is the fourth the fifth chapter of the movie it's, it's the title was the last one, which also was the title of the last one of the, the sitcom friends that the daughter in the movie was, um, was, um, yeah, you said, yeah, Dred Scott and people don't know who Dred Scott is, you know, we're talking about one who, you know, was seeking his freedom to be freed and uh, also went as far as the insurrection uh, rising up, but also, uh, if I remember correctly, tried to go over into another state and was considered to be free, but yet then didn't get his freedom because they turned him down. So anyway, I don't want to get in farther than that. Y'all can go into your research on that. But anyway, the woman says in the movie, it says there's this mass delusion uh, how we can, you know, always F up each other as people and we lie and we get over on people. And also in the movie, it, in this this fifth part of the chapter in the scene when the, the brother is trying to befriend his wife friend who turns his back on him and uh, eventually will take the money and give the man, the white guy, pain relief for his son's mouth. Um, they make mention of this, when he hears about his son, the white guy says, hey, so he lost his teeth. He said, it might be from the sound. Do you know about the microwave weapon that they have, that they used in Cuba? So I looked that up and you know, there is this uh, microwave weapon that there have been those that worked in the Pentagon, I'm not, excuse me, in the embassy who came down with a lot of sicknesses. And they were saying that there was these emittance of signals that was causing sicknesses to a people. And maybe the screeching sound that they were hearing in the movies was that action weaponized system. In other words, get your earplugs, family. Get your headphones when you hear this screeching sound that might be going off. But you also got to be weary of movies. Every time there are things that go like that and flashes, turn your head away. Those could be used as means as mesmerizing or hypnotizing you. You got to understand you can hypnotize people through film. Hence why the guy did the stirring of the cup in the so-called Starbucks coffee, showing the emblem of the Starbucks, which also they're going to get 
they probably paid to have their their thing because remember i worked in the film film industry and a lot of them want their names and stuff they will pay to sponsor that project and all that there but there are messages that these writers put in there so they talked about that uh so he offers money to the man they insinuate maybe the Koreans or the Chinese uh, maybe be responsible for what's going on. And they talk about destabilizing the country. Um, yeah. So in closing, family, let me read to you those five names of each chapter. The first one was called the... Um, Hold on a second. Let me go back here. The first part of the movie was called House. The second chapter of it was called The Curve. The, sec the third one was called The Noise. The fourth was called The Flood. And the fifth was called The Last One. Now, at the end of the movie, this girl where the, what, the guy who was holding the gun with a shotgun didn't want to help his black so-called associate. I call it associate. He wasn't friend. Because he told him, hey, you got to defend your own. I ain't trying to help you. I don't know you now. He said, you better, why don't you go over there to the to the Thorns place? You know, it's quiet as kept. You know, when he built that house, he built a bunker underneath his house. You might want to go there. So at the end of the movie, they never found the daughter, but they go to the house. And the daughter, she's in the house in the kitchen eating up food and drinking water. And then she walks almost out of the house, but she turns down and sees the hallway. She goes down the hallway. She comes to a safe door. And then she opens this big metal door. She goes down in the basement and here is the safety bunker. It has food forever. It has a computer system. She turns this little knob on and it turns on all the lights in there. And it has all the survival, all the survival mechanisms and the survival things that you will need to be able to last for long. And they got this computer system that has the alert stating that the White House of Washington, D.C. and other, other places are under attack. So they have some type of connection with an outside source of communicating. All right. This girl's down there. So she sits down there. She sees all the food. She goes and she sees this big library of CDs of movies. And she finds her movie of the last episode that she's been trying to, to watch. But there's been no signal on her iPad. She pops it in the player. And the song comes on, I'll be there for you. So then it goes, the movie goes off. Now, what are those five chapters of that movie that I came up, I mean, that they came up with that, what does it mean? Um, uh, so what does the house could mean, whatever? It can mean vulnerability. A house can represent the sense of vulnerability during crisis or an attack. As it is placed, it is the place where people seek safety and protection, but can also become a target or be compromised. A curve, uh, unpredictability. It can symbolize the unexpected or unforeseen events that can occur during a crisis or attack. It represents the element of surprise and the need to adapt quickly to changing circumstances. Now, remember, the guy said in the movie, I should have saw the curve, the curve in the stock market, showing that there's something was going to happen. He should have saw the sign of his friend who had, he, he's, he couldn't tell the woman the name. He said, but he's a good big guy and you know him. I did a research to try to find out what individual has the largest defense contract with the government. And it kept taking me to, um, um, Lockheed Martin. Lockheed, Lockheed Martin is the largest defense contractors with the U.S. government. OK, but I couldn't find an individual per se. But I asked the AI a different way of a question of um, who in because uh, I knew about Dick Cheney because I was in the war in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. So when I was there and uh, he was with he was with Halliburton. And the um, yeah, he was with Halliburton in that company and he made millions of dollars because that company, they what they did was put out fires from oils 
right, from the oil uh, rigs. And his company went over in Africa, I mean, over in Saudi Arabia or in uh, Kuwait to put out all those. And he made millions off of that in the early night. It was in 1993 when they actually started putting out those fires. So that was the second curve. Can you see the change in what's happening? The curve. The noise. Noise could mean chaos and disruption. Noise and flood. And the last one represents chaos and disruption during a crisis or attack. Noise can signify the overwhelming amount of information, confusion, or panic that can prevail in such situations. Okay? You know how it is when they, you know people say conspiracy. When you when you um, when you don't want people to see the truth, you cause a ruck, you cause a ruckus or uh, you cause a, a a disturbance over there so they can turn and look and not keep the eye on what's really going on. And that's the, the point of noise. When situations happen, you know, they want to keep you confused. Hold on a second. Yo. Uh, I got I got three more minutes. Give me three more minutes. Okay. So um, you got to be alert. You got to be vigilant. As the scriptures say, be sober. Be, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, roams about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So you got to keep that in mind, family. Now, it says here that the noise can signify the overwhelming amount of information, confusion or panic that can prevail in such situations. The flood can symbolize the overwhelming surge of events or emotions. Or like I said, even water can be considered as a washing, a cleansing. Flood can also mean people flooding into a place, remember? It don't have to mean water. You could be flooded with a lot of information to distract you by the news, just pushing information out. This is the garbage that we find. A lot of garbage on the internet right now. People putting lies out there. People that you thought, they talk about conspiracy theory, but they don't even do research on things. Then they could propagate a lot of these lies that I have to go through before I put up information to make sure it was legit. Because I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. Then it says here, what I got here? What did I put? The last one, an unspecified element can represent the unknown or unexpected factors that can arise during crisis and attack. So go back there, send me an email, go back to Africa at gmail.com and what pieces that you picked up. Because we all play a part in how we perceive and see things. Because I know I missed some things in it, but I, I picked up a lot of those things, especially dealing with things dealing with us black folk. Why does this movie is it's doing these endo-endos and these so-called subliminal messages that's dealing with slavery? We saw it was about the white lion. That's the first ship that came into America with slaves. Then we saw about the Ku Klux Klan on the pictures with the hoods and two little black eyeballs showing that the hood, that's hoods. Why did we see that it was also uh, the sign of Tanny that was who happened to be one of the owners of that plantation? And he was a, a judge who voted against uh, slaves could not be citizens of America. He turned that the whole thing down. Um, what else did I mention? Um, the uh, 1619 also represented the year of when the white lion came on the shores of America. Uh, what else was there? Uh, the, the, the white couple and the black couple fighting and tossing and turning and all that right there. And they try to get closer in the movie as being friends, but there was always a line between them. The white woman really cared about herself and their her family and the uh, but the black man cared more about the family than his own self, which goes to show that the subliminal meshes of how we are stuck in slavery. We have a mentality of always looking out for them, but not even looking out for ourselves. The black man is willing to put his life on the line for the white guy. But yet he kept leaving his daughter by herself instead of being the protector of his daughter. The daughter said in the in the in the movie, Dad. Do not trust white people. You shouldn't trust. Well, she said you shouldn't trust anybody, but especially white people. And people got mad over the white people about that white person statement. But let me see if the people get mad over this right here because I pointed it out. I ain't seen nobody point that out. 
Why is it in the movie? And I watched the interview of the writers. They'll nobody mention it. Why? Because you see, when you have a black eye view on things, you tend to look at it in a perception of your culture and the way you see things are. This is why many cultures need to stop fighting against each other and use each other for what your perception is, because you can build off of it. But as we saw, Jenga, which I also was a thing that, that was on the blocks there, it was stamped in the blocks. Remember Jenga? Jenga is a Swahili word from Kenya, which means to build. But, and where was Obama's father from? Kenya. Obama's mother is white. People forget that. So people get an uproar. Why he said about white people? Obama's mother is white. Does Obama not even trust white people? Will Kenya tumble down? Is that what it's talking about? Or maybe is it referencing America? Blacks going to be at a disadvantage maybe. What does it mean? Because we did also see that the writings were in Arabic and it said death to America. And everybody knows in Revelations in the Bible, it talks about the, the, that, about the dragon that they had, the red dragon. America, Babylon shall fall. It says people sung, Babylon has fallen. The angels sung that. The old dragon is dead. Anyway, family, I hope you enjoy this and I hope that you've gathered something. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you all. I should charge y'all for this too, but I never asked for money. But anyway, thank you very much for coming in. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you all. Please go back and watch that movie again. There's a whole lot of signs that are in there. This is your man, not your boy, bringing you another gold nugget that you can pick up or you can just kick it aside. I'm out.